Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. A lot of great stories. All of those stories will be time marked down below. As always, let's hop into our first story though. And the first couple actually revolving around JW himself. If any of you guys do remember back in April of 2016, he opened his very own gaming store in a very small city in, in Sweden. That city goes by the name of Avesta. And luckily to all of you guys out there, thanks to my friend Andreas, a viewer of the show as well as a member of my Discord, he actually sent us inside pictures of his gaming store. So for all of you guys who are curious what his gaming store did look like, it's pretty much like any other computer store out there, any other, like a Best Buy here in America, they have a lot of gaming products for them, so I'll show you guys some of the pictures on screen. I do apologize, not the most high quality pictures, but still, nonetheless, thank you Andreas for sending those in, and for any of you guys who are curious about JW's gaming store, it is still open, he rarely ever goes there or frequents the shop, of course, he's traveling all over the world, ever since the Fnatic guys actually came to, uh, of course, announce the initial opening, I highly doubt any of them actually been there ever since, but the gaming store is still there and apparently still making money for him, who knows, as how much money the store did look pretty empty but either way that was a cool inside peek at JW's gaming store still the only pro out there that we know of as of right now that has his own game, gaming store in Sweden now on top of that as well we do have another story very briefly about JW being classic JW and also burning Smuya this past week with this tweet on screen if you guys know what that actually references to uh, I'm going to I'm going to sign this contract without reading it of course famously uh, just a couple weeks ago actually we had Smuya argue that Epsilon had locked him into his contract he was a part of their bench and being underpaid well, apparently it was in his contract uh, his contract negotiations that if he was on the bench and not on the starting roster, they were allowed to pay him such a small rate. So that was the joke there. JW doing classic JW things, but his store is still doing quite well, so congrats to him. And also in very important CSK news for all you upcoming E-League major watchers as well as sticker investors out there, I know many of you guys are aware we've seen a huge price soaring of the Tyloo sticker prices, mainly in the hollows and the foils. Of course, their regular sticker price is above, way above average as well, but I'm going to focus mainly on their hollows and foils and why you guys should at least be very wary be very very uh, cognizant guys of this market and please do not invest and if you do just be careful I think this these prices are very very inflated and they will come back down now people are speculating right now that of course Tyler we pretty much confirmed 100% they will be forfeiting their spot to the major and it does seem likely the third place Asian minor finisher that will be flash gaming will replace them at the major qualifier itself now they're currently in talks confirmed by HLTV with valve about their stickers coming into the game now despite this being an unprecedented event we've never had a full team uh, submit late artwork but in the past, I can tell you guys this, we've had several players out there pass the artwork deadline for any organizer out there, as well as PGL and E-League. They actually deny many player requests to change their artwork for their stickers that were past the deadline. Now, of course, this is a one in a lifetime. This is the first time we've ever seen this, though, an entire team, that being the Flash Gaming roster, all trying to submit artwork, of course, ahead uh, behind that deadline. So uh, kind of going to be weird to see how E-League responds if they do take that artwork. What's going to happen? Now, I do believe, though, that currently my own belief is personally that I think Tyloo still Stickers will stay in the game and Flash Gaming will not get stickers at all. What they'll do though is Valve can also of course take that Tyloo sticker money and instead of giving it to Tyloo, they can give it to Flash Gaming or make, make some kind of means work. I do not think that Flash Gaming will get their stickers submitted on time due to artwork and of course that huge deadline for E-League to try and get that artwork done. I think they're not going to get their stickers in the game and that's why mainly speculation has actually so caused these prices to soar. People thinking the Tyloo sticker will be removed altogether. I think it'll stay in the capsules guys, it'll stay in the game and of course that uh, that's why you see the prices rise so much. The demand for these has been out of control. We've had several foils actually sell for above $100 for Tai Lu, which is absolutely an insane price to see. It's way, way too inflated, and so please be careful. Several people have actually messaged me saying, Jake, I bought it for $40, $30. I made a bunch of money. Congratulations. Make your money while you can, but please, in the long run, be careful. Once the major sticker sale does come, these stickers will 100% drop in price, unless by some weird, weird definition or some weird way that Valve actually does remove the Tai Lu stickers from the capsule and only the stickers that have been open actually stay in the game. I think that would be an idiotic move by Valve to do. I do not think Flash Gaming will get stickers. I think Tyloo stickers are here to stay and they will drop in price so please be careful about that. Now of course all this coming around the rumors that the third place team Flash Gaming is in talks with Valve. They should be replacing Tyloo at the major and that actually does come with some other uh, circumstances for the uh, for the Pick'em Challenge. Let's say Valve still needs to make announcements for the Pick'em Challenge. Will Tyloo be a guaranteed 0-3 pick? Because if you don't have a sticker you can't be in the Pick'em Challenge. 
So if Flash Gaming does replace Ty Lu, does that mean Ty Lue is going to be an automatic 0-3 pick? We have to wait for updates on that, but also for updates for all of you Flash Gaming fans out there, the few, the proud, the the Flash Gaming uh, fan base out there. We do want to talk about, though, their visa issues and the team issues as well. I've had many comments over the past few days of my negativity towards Asian teams, and that will continue. They will be by far and away the underdog, the underwhelming team here, due to uh, obvious reasons. Actually, if you guys are, uh, follow the Flash Gaming team, many of the rosters not even play with the team over the past month. We had two of their members, Lovey and Karsa, who actually were benched a month ago, and they only were brought back into the team to make this major work. Now, on top of that, we also had Lovey and another member, Kays. They finally got their visa issues issues figured out and that's why the team should be able to make it. Almost half that roster has not played with the team since December. So going to be cool to see how they do and how they perform. I'm not expecting anything strong out of them though uh, for obvious reasons. And also I was on vacation so I do apologize for yesterday's story. I talked about the rank downs for rank S and of course ESCA distributing those rank downs to several well-known people out there. Renova, a former rank S player of the week and as well as Mo TV, I'm sure you guys are aware of. They were all actually moved down to rank G based off popular opinion of other pro players who do play rank S. Those were actually reverted though a couple days later and actually a few days ago of me recording this. So I do apologize for missing that guys. Mo TV has been reinstated to rank S as well as Renova and all their other rank downs out there and of course they're going to try and change their system and hopefully a better system to come sometime soon for rank S and not have it be uh, that kind of criteria where other players can actually kick out other players just based off a popular opinion. So on top of that though even more importantly for all you CLG fans out there I'm not really sure the future of this future CLG roster. Now currently of course CLG has no CSGO team. Their members have spread out far and thin. We have Ricky looking for other teams as well as FNS. The current three players who were playing together uh, formerly of CLG and then they were playing as Unemployed for Christmas was their team name. That was actually Cutler, Ethan, and Kusta. Those are the three players that would retain the majority spot for EPL next season and ECS and that was their main debate or their main uh, the thing they had over organizations who were going to try and sign them. Of course if you have big spots in EPL or ECS that's a big selling factor but it does seem though Cutler announces on Twitter he's going to be a free agent so I've actually reached out to both him and Kusta and as well I'm going to try and reach out to Ethan later via Twitter and find out what this means for the majority part they actually have in EPL or ECS. Will that spot be forfeited if these players don't play together? I'm also going to reach out to ESL Pro League if you guys know what happens here. If the majority roster who holds those EPL and ECS spots does not play together, what happens to the spot? Is it forfeited? Does it go back to CLG who has no team? No one knows as of right now though, but it does seem those CLG guys are looking for organizations out there. Maybe they will still stay together. Maybe it will still be Cutler, Kusta, and Ethan together to try and get those spots uh, still certified. We'll see what happens though in CLG's near future. And that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. I do thank you guys very much for watching yesterday's pick em video, but I do want to make a quick change. Now, I'm probably not going to change mine because I still feel like experience does matter, but you guys made a great few points yesterday about choosing some teams over other teams. I know I did make the, I made the kind of the, the ballsy pick, I guess I would say, of a flip side because I completely forgot. I did mention it earlier, of course, Electronic going to Navi. That was why I chose them, but I forgot, of course, I had to take away Electronic from flip side. So I would maybe change that pick, guys, for a flip side pick for the major to make it through the to, through the qualifier to the actual major itself. I would maybe put a space holders in there, but my my hesitancy towards space holders was, of course, you know, notoriously, they, don't, they can't play on land. They're a very online team, and of course, they have looked very good these past few months, rising the HLTV rankings, but that would be my response to all of you guys who said choose space holders and Xan Terrors instead. I think their online play is, is phenomenal. When it comes to best of one on land, though, will that luck, you know, carry over? Who knows what's going to happen, though, but I think that last spot there, that very, very last spot is very hairy. Many teams could join that. I would also maybe put Liquid above a Space Holders. Even though they're going to play with their coach, I still would say Liquid, of course, you know, your number three North American team, but it's very, very hard to choose as of right now a North American team or an Asian team or an Asian minor team to actually go through. We'll see what happens, guys. If you want to check out that major pick and video, I'll link it down below for all of you. As always, though, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. Please leave a comment down below. I'll make sure to reply to as many as possible. As always, I'll see you guys all tomorrow with more CSGO news. Remember, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. And, uh, okay, bye. <laughs>